While going through my games, deciding what to film next, I come across a lot of titles that were released in the year 2000, so I decided to shift gears and put late 90s PC gaming on hold while I check out some of these Y2K releases. For the first episode of Y2K PC Gaming, we'll be taking a look at Airfix Dogfighter. This game is pretty cool, at first anyway. Airfix is a UK model kit company. They've been around since 1939. They must have thought that a video game would help boost their company presence. I mean, it worked for Lego. In 2000, Eon Digital Entertainment published Airfix Dogfighter. Eon was a short-lived company, like it was only alive for two years. The game itself was developed by Paradox Entertainment, which shouldn't be confused with Paradox Interactive. That's a complicated situation, but it's not super important anyway. What is important is that this is a World War II themed sentient toys arcade flight game. Say that three times fast. That just sounds amazing on paper though. I'm a sucker for toys coming to life and shooting at each other. The Army Men series is great for the most part. Chibi Robo is fantastic. It's a premise that hasn't been done enough, I feel. So there's two factions, allies and axis. Standard World War II stuff. There's a dozen or so planes represented on both sides, mostly British, American, Italian, and German. There is a Zero, but that's as far as the Japanese go. I didn't notice any Soviet aircraft, but I could have glossed over it. The battlefield is the house. The Allies occupy the upstairs, while the Axis occupy the downstairs. There's ten missions aside, and that's honestly really short. These missions are usually fly here, kill two to three enemies, and collect pickups. There are some standouts. Fighting in the attic was cool. The door has to be shot down to access. But the best one is where you have to shoot a window open to access the backyard. You and two bombers raid an enemy base that is outside. That's pretty cool. Each room of the house is represented, but the gameplay doesn't change between them. Like, you're not really going to see large battles either. I think I've seen a few planes in the air with a few ground units, and that's about it. Being toys means that the house feels huge. The scale has been pretty perfected. And for this being the year 2000, I think the graphics are fantastic. Dogfighter does support widescreen, as you can probably tell. The only problem is that the UI doesn't scale. That wouldn't be a huge problem if it wasn't for the fact that the bottom of the screen houses the objective updates. The first time I played this, I had no idea what to do because I missed that tiny text. Even when you pull up the objectives tab, it doesn't quite tell you what you should be doing. No, you have to go to the history tab and see what the text said if you missed it. Oh well, not a big deal once you get used to keeping your eyes down there. Also, when you realize that each mission is almost the exact same. Like honestly, once you've done a few missions, you can kind of infer what to do next. Like the environments change with furniture being moved around and whatnot, but other than that, you can pretty much tell what you need to do. There is a radar that tells you where certain objectives are, but it also doesn't always do that. The game's kind of picky with what waypoints it wants to give you. The gameplay is ultra simplistic. The flight model is arcade style. Don't have to worry about stalling and slamming into walls or A-OK. -okay. You don't have to lead targets to do the auto-aim taking care of all that for you. Arcade flight models are fine by me. I don't expect every game to be hyper-realistic. But at the same time, it's so simple that you don't even really have to worry about your weapons. Each plane has the same exact primary weapon, and all the secondary weapons are pickups like missiles, bombs, but the primary machine gun does all the work just fine. Anytime I use a secondary weapon, it usually takes longer than if I had just fired with a machine gun. There are pickups called tech, and each level you start at zero. If you reach 10, you get upgraded weapons. Same at 20 and 30. Typically, I can get to at least 10, but missions are so short that I rarely see 20, and only seen 30 once. Of course, you can take the time to blow up every piece of breakable decor to make sure you reach those upgraded weapons, but typically it's not needed. There's fuel, but again, it was never a problem because the missions are short. Like, I don't want to say this game's bad, because it isn't, but I don't really want to say it's good either. I guess, I guess passable is the word that I'm looking for. It can be really fun, but can also get boring real quick. It doesn't help that the plot is only given through pre-mission text, and it's the standard go blow this stuff up. There's not really characters, there's not really, like, any urgency or any kind of, like, I don't know, conflict besides who controls the house. Like the Army Men series actually had a pretty detailed lore with some emotion thrown in. Well, this just seems pretty basic. And for it to be an airfix game, there's no assembly of these planes. Like, sure, you fly around and get glue and plans and kits, but these planes are made off screen. You can kind of customize the decals and the camouflage, but that, that's really it. It's kind of disappointing that there's no customization when it's a game made by a model airplane company, but whatever. I'm pretty sure this game was probably made on a tiny budget, so I guess I can't complain too much. 
There is a multiplayer mode, but of course I wasn't able to test it. There is a level editor, which I love. Games that have any kind of editor mode gets a plus from me. But in the end, I probably will never boot this game up again. Check it out if you want to fly World War II themed toys across a 1960s style house while also getting the occasional history lesson. But I would skip this and look at other flight games of the similar tone. When I first checked it out, I was in love with it. But the more I played it, the more I began to fall asleep. But yeah, that's the first episode of Y2K PC Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. And a huge shout out to my patrons as always. It was because of them that I was able to snag this physical copy, which is very nice. I love the cover so much. Links in the description below to whatever OST I used. Link to the discords also down there, as well as some other things. Who knows what I'm going to throw down there in the description. <laughs> I'm excited to talk about some Y2K games. And the next episode is actually one that the people in the discord suggested. And I'm going to check it out. But until then... Have a lovely July 4th if you live in America, and if not, have a fantastic weekend regardless. I sure hope I release this before July 4th or on July 4th or else this is going to be uh, pretty dated. We'll see, won't we? <laughs> see you in the next episode of whatever that may be.